Hey guys, I'm Randy Unger, and this is a very special edition of Unger the Radar, where we uh, typically talk film, but tonight we're going to be speaking about a show, a TV show that has been inspired by a film, so it's pretty close enough. Um, it is Cobra Kai, uh, the extremely popular Netflix series that follows the adventures, I guess adventures is sort of a, the right term, uh, for Daniel LaRusso and um, also... Uh, Johnny Lawrence, who were basically rivals in the 80s, and now flash forward 35 years or so, um, they're involved with a, they're basically uh, reigniting that rivalry, and it's really interesting to watch. Um, we see the next generation, their kids get involved with martial arts and conflict um, with, you know, Cobra Kai and Miyagi-Do, um, switching places, switching dojos and like internal conflicts. This show has it all. Um, I love it. And with me to talk about it tonight, I got a wonderful panel of guests. Um, we've got uh, Vinny Bonfanti back from, from, it's been a while, Vinny. How's it going? Yeah, well, busy when you have a kid, you know? True. <laughs> True, true. Yeah. Um, well, that's good. Fatherhood. Um, I, I haven't experienced that yet, but I, I'll take your word for it. Um, and we've got Faris Bennett. Welcome, welcome. Hey, Randy. It's been a minute. Yeah. What well, was it last week or the week before? Last week. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. Well, welcome back. You know. All right. And uh, we got new to the show, uh, Chris Malarkey. Welcome, sir. This is great. Hey, hey man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, yeah. So I invited you specifically, uh, you and Vinny actually uh, both have martial arts uh, backgrounds. And mm -hmm. Chris, I just wanted to hear about your uh, experience with martial arts, which, um, what type do you practice and how that relates to your love for the show? Copy. Um, well, I've been doing uh, practice in Taekwondo. It's my main, my main uh, focus, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, for about 28 years come this September. So I've been involved in it for that's most of my life. So I won't give out give out my age, but um, <laughs> I'm not much older than the years I've practiced the sports. Let's put it like that. <laughs> um, so it's kind of been like my first love. I love to uh, I love movement, and um, I guess Taekwondo sort of captured that for me. And you know, I had to kind of like you know your mom drops you off, and you know, let's see how you you know I have a lot of abundance of energy. So that was kind of my introduction into it. And obviously, 28 years later, it's been transformed into me teaching going different places different countries teaching um still teaching today i was teaching earlier this afternoon a couple hours before we started the show um hence the uniform still being on so it's uh it's uh it's a, it's a lifestyle for me it's really uh it's really wonderful to be able to communicate what you love to somebody else and get them to get them to be involved and, and love it too um so that kind of directly ties in with cobra kai and many ways is that there's a lot of uh, origin and, um, and similarities between karate and taekwondo. They're not, they're actually more similar than they, than they are dissimilar. Um, mm. So I don't necessarily have that rivalry in my head of, you know, taekwondo versus karate. I kind of embrace the, uh, the, uh, the differences and the similarities too. Is there a lot of, is there a lot of crossover with, with those styles? A lot of crossover. I mean, a lot of the movements, a lot of the kicks, um, like pretty much all the kicks, like there's really only a couple of ways to kick differently. So, I mean, your, your anatomy is pretty, you know, you got two hands and two legs. So, I mean, there's not, there's not too many things you can do with them. Um, mm -hmm. The the kicks and the punches, the guarding blocks, the knife hands, the, the punches, like all that stuff. Some of the, a lot of the other blocks, it, it's very, very similar. There are some like fundamental differences in the theories of generation of power. Uh, I think Taekwondo is definitely more uh, based in the physics. So it's a little more scientific, I think. Mm -hmm. um, even the meanings of the words are different in, uh, in the countries, obviously, where they, uh, where they originated from, Taekwondo being from Korea and Karate originating from Japan and Okinawa. So it's, you've got a lot of cultural differences, too. Okay. Um, so, you know, if I were a Korean person and talking about Kaukai, I don't know, because that sometimes they butt heads over, over their <laughs> history. But um, as an observer and sort of, a, I guess, an enthusiast of the martial arts, it's kind of cool to watch it being spun. Mm -hmm. um, in this way, cinematically, you know, especially with all of the fanfare from Karate Kid coming all the way now into 2020, which I, you know, we all, I guess, think it died back then. And, you know, we would never get to see this again. And yeah, we are on a third season. True, true. And I, I want to go back a little bit. Um, so your yeah. students, what, what ages um, do you typically teach? Ages range. I've taught, I mean, my, the, my youngest student, I mean, was really, my youngest student was my son. Um, I started mm -hmm. teaching him, he was two and a half. Um, okay. two and, and a half 
two and wow. a half. Yep. And and then I guess I can even really, if I really want to put it this way, it's like my daughter. I, I, she can kick. Like I've been having her. Like if I tell, if I bring her in here right now to come kick, she'll she'll give me a couple a couple solid solid form. Like you know, just holding on to something and boom. So okay. I guess it varies, but legit. Um, going to the other end of the spectrum, my oldest student's been about seventy years old. Wow. So I've taught I've taught the whole the whole range and on all of them being able to be effective using their bodies in the periods that their bodies are in. Um, and that's really the goal of martial arts is to get you to optimize what you can do. You're not supposed to, you know, Bruce used to say like, you, the, which I still think is true, um, as profound as he was uh, and a martial artist, he was, I think, even more profound a philosopher. He used to say that you have to be careful as an instructor of your own influence on your students. So, you know, the goal is not to get you to look like me. The goal is to get you to be the best version of you, right. however that is, you know what I mean? So that's, that's always the goal uh, when mm -hmm. I teach, regardless of the range. Um, obviously those conversations are different at different ages. You know, <laughs> I'm not talking philosophy with, you know, two and a half year olds and, you know, mm -hmm. almost two year olds, but you know, it's, uh, it's definitely, it's definitely a great experience just to be a, to be a teacher. It's, hum it's a humbling and it's a, uh, Gives me a lot of life. Gives me a reason to wake up for sure. That's awesome. That yes, man. Enjoy your job like that. And really I don't even think about it as a job. I just love oh. it. Like someone says, "Hey, can you teach?" I'm like, "Yo!" Like I throw the uniform anytime. <laughs> I've taught. I've taught as late as eleven o'clock in my house. Like I've had someone here to like legit eleven p.m. <laughs> and, gone, and gone till midnight, twelve thirty. You know, just talking and you know, not just moving around, but also conversing about what we're doing, which I think is kind of one of the advantages of training privately with an instructor versus the class structure. So I'm also, I'm not happy about what's happening obviously in the world with the pandemic, but it's allowed me to adapt using that martial arts mindset, right? Adapting to the circumstances, um, training people privately one-on-one, -on -one, obviously safely, socially distant, you know, in any, any, any way that makes them comfortable um, and still being able to get the job done. Um, but it's, it's been, it's been a great experience. I've gotten a lot of old students uh, back that I used to teach um, many years ago. I mean, we're talking way back. And they're like, hey, are you still around? And I'm like, I'm still moving around. So let's do it, you know? Great, great. That's so, that's great. Yeah, it Very is. Very cool. Um, Vinny, I'm curious about, about your uh, involvement with martial arts. Yeah, well, um, I started doing American Kempo at DH4. Uh, it was on a suggestion from a friend of my father's because I had really, really bad ADHD at a young age. And, you know, constantly bouncing around the house, so much energy, you know, not that I was getting abused, but, you know, I get hit because I was doing something wrong and I'd like hit back and I'd like, you know, it was like bouncing back and forth. So, hmm. you know, figure out what to do with me. So one of his uh, friends suggested uh, martial arts and he goes, what are you nuts? Like he's going to learn to hit people and he's already so energetic. And he goes, no, they'll teach him focus. You know, they'll, they'll teach him to be respectful. So at four, uh, I went, you know, I was with the little kids and everything like that. And, you know, my idea, because at a young age, I was watching all, you know, I was watching Jackie Chan movies back then with my dad and Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris and everything like that. So I thought that's what martial art was about. So, of course, the first thing I did was kick and punch other kids. Right? <laughs> and uh, my uh, Sifu did not like that. So he just took me and threw me. And I learned right away, well, this is part of being disciplined. You know, you do something bad, you know, you got to get the discipline for it. So. Uh, and he wasn't afraid to discipline me. You know, it'd be a little bit doing it today with today's standards and the culture. But back then, you know, I, you did something wrong. You got hit. And that was it. And I remember him telling my dad once, I have to train Vinny like dog. Dog does something bad. Dog get hit. Dog don't do it no more. You know, and it, and it worked, you know. And, and then you, as I progressed growing up, you know, like, uh, Chris was saying a lot of philosophies playing to uh, everything. So like martial arts, we use martial arts every day. If there's like, say, an old woman who needs to cross the street, there's a problem that needs to be solved. You use martial arts, you help her out. You know, if two guys are fighting or getting angry, you got to talk them out of it. That's martial arts. It's, it's mm -hmm. strategic. It's all in your head, too. Like you're seeing mostly when you learn martial arts, you try to see two, three moves, even five moves ahead. You have to kind of do the same thing with life. Right. If you're driving you know, on the highway and you think this guy's going to go left, you know, you need to anticipate things. So I was taught that everything we do is martial arts, you know, and, you know, and, and it's helped me meet a lot of people, be more sociable. Like if you see a kid there who's, you know, alone by himself at the lunch table, you know, using a martial arts, you're countering the attack of his loneliness to talk to him. You know, that's, that's the way I was taught. So uh, I studied that from about four to uh, four to 10. I did it. And then I got injured. I actually broke my foot 
uh, from doing martial arts because the competitions we used to do back then as kids, you know, today we had no head pads. We had like uh, like the plastic knee pads and stuff like that. You know, uh, you know, it's different today with MMA. Uh, I know a lot of kids are starting to do MMA at a young age, but uh, back then we used to do, you know, uh, tournaments at like something similar to like Karate Kid. But we used to do it in big gymnasiums. You'd have like six or seven matches going on at once that kind of thing i mean you know i didn't have the music playing like in karate kid did the best that would have been a great movie. but uh you know played an integral part of my life you know when you and, were when you broke your foot Vinny, were you training with terry silver <laughs> I would, no uh i i um, i kicked the kid right in his knee and my uh, oh, I want the bones i mean i was 10 years old you know and you know, my ADHD was still, I mean, it's not as bad as it was when I was a kid, but, you know, it was like, oh, I'm going to hit him. Oh, I'm going to kick him. And I just kicked way too hard. And that was it. You know, uh, you know, yeah. I broke my hand a couple of <laughs> times, but, you know, all these things, they make you stronger. You know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Right. So um, but I was always more into the whole philosophy of my uh, Sifu used to say, we're, you know, we're not here to offend. We're here to defend. Right. Your martial art is not an, uh, you know, it's an offensive martial art, meaning that. Kempo is more of like in other martial arts, it's all about wait, not saying that you have to, but like wait till the guy punches first, then do it. Kempo is very much you're the aggressor. You know, you got to go in right away and take him out, and that's it. Like first, so, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, in the sense of, uh, I don't want to say it's as bad as crease, strike first, strike hard. <laughs> like you're anticipating the situation, you know something's going to happen, so yeah. you got to end it quick, you know? That where, you know, crease is more like, oh, just punch him in the face, no matter what, <laughs> yeah. that kind of thing. That's more of a bully dominance kind of thing, you know? But yeah, but, uh, you know, it's great to see, you know, I'm obviously a fan of martial arts films in general and Karate Kid growing up, because I was born in 84, uh, you know, growing up, we had the animated series, which was awesome too. <laughs> right. uh, all the toys, everything, you know, the whole wax on, wax off, Mr. Miyagi thing. So growing up, doing martial arts and then being you know watching this stuff it was huge because it was like you know uh ralph macchio is italian i'm italian so everyone used to call me daniel's son growing up too <laughs> cool he's from, uh and he's from huntington too you're uh you're yeah. sort of near huntington right or i'm um, full park yeah he lives right here ralph macchio he lives close yeah. by do you ever see him Would no never saw him actually, uh, actually, actually mike mike because i have coworkers who live in huntington and they've seen him around town Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I've heard good things though. I heard he's really nice and everything like that. But I did meet him once. I met him at Comic Con, and my buddy Sean uh, paid to take a picture, so I took the picture. But I wanted to take the picture with him. But Why couldn't they do the both of you in, in the in the picture? Because no one else was going to want to hold the camera, so I had to. Oh man! <laughs> oh, no. so, oh. Yeah, but you know, because I, I think I, what did I spend my money on that day? I think I spent it on Tommy the Green Ranger, who you know I was always huge yeah, into. That was a dude. That was a dude. That's a good substitute. Yeah. Jason David Frank. Yep. But, uh, but yeah, so watching Cobra Kai and what's cool to me is also with the structure of the story, like in season three, and like we're like you said, we're allowed to talk about spoilers, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't mention it at the beginning of the show, but yeah, <laughs> guys listening, watching at home on your devices, this is a spoiler. We're, we're welcoming all spoilers. So yeah. no holds barred. We're, we're right. going to get into right. it. <laughs> so we're watching like season three was episode two of the garage fight, right? Being a martial artist watching the fight scenes, yeah. you see the characterizations and kind of the like how they do the moves like Johnny's a very Cobra Kai strike first strike hard Daniel's all defense and that's exactly how the fight scene played out Johnny's the first one to punch because he strikes first you know uh he's more the aggressor more of the brawler and Daniel's just defending you know he's yeah. doing arm bars and stuff like that you know he's not punching he's chopping like that stuff to me as a martial artist is really cool to see that yeah. they've actually integrated the character's personality into their actual martial arts as I well. Definitely, I definitely noticed um, from a stance point of view, Johnny mm -hmm. just goes right into the action. Yeah. And, and yeah. Daniel has this thing with his with his hands. He does like this weird thing. Yeah, he can there. block. He's always defending because okay. the bottom karate for defense or defending right. up. Right, right. Uh, for defense that, only. Rule number one. Right. <laughs> and then rule number two. Learn rule number one. Yep, yep. <laughs> right. I love it. Um, so, but yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. What are you saying, Vinny? No, I'm saying so. Being a martial artist, seeing that stuff is like really cool because I think anyone who likes martial art movies, I mean, as much as the stories might be cool, you always look for the fight scenes, you know? Of course. But the fact that they're able to do this with the show and integrate their personalities into the actual fight scenes, I think that's awesome. 
for me, this show is not about karate or fighting. This is really about relationships and internal conflicts. And that's what fascinates me so much about this show. Um, I was a little hesitant going in. Like, is this just going to be? Everybody was. Everybody yeah, was hesitant. Yeah, yeah. But after like the first episode, I think I was hooked. So, um, Forrest, I, I don't want to leave you out, sir. Right, um, right. What, do you have any um, background in martial arts yourself? Or? Um, I, took a, I took Taekwondo from the time from uh, ages 11 to 12. Mm -hmm. uh, made it up to a made it up to green to a green belt, uh, and then I had to drop it because my family moved from Pennsylvania to Utah. Uh huh. Oh, wow. And and then when we moved to Utah, I took up kung fu, mm. and I made my way from a uh, white belt to a purple belt in that. Nice. Uh, and then I dropped, and then uh, life got in the way, so I dropped out, uh, dropped out of it altogether. Although uh, for a while I was doing, I was doing like kickbox, doing kickboxing on you, like following kickboxing workouts on YouTube. Cool. Uh, okay. Which I kind of want to get, which I want to get back into. Mm. Right. Yeah, I need to get into some kind of martial art, especially with the pandemic. You know, you, you yeah. get a little over, not overweight, but out of shape. Um, yeah, so I was, I, in, I, I was in, like, I was in the best shape of my life when I was doing martial yeah. arts. <laughs> well, wow. I'm thinking for me personally, I think it might be a good idea to get into it, but we'll see. Um, the extent of my martial arts training, I did uh, Tiger Shulman's karate for oh, one, month, like, one month when I was uh, like 12. So um, yeah, but it, it was okay. It, it, I, like, I like the discipline part. That's but, like, yeah, that was like Cobra Kai. It was very commercialized Tiger Romans, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, there, yeah, there's locations everywhere. Oh yeah. I don't remember the uh, sensei being uh, like Crease, but uh, no. he was pretty, he was okay. He was stern but fair. Yeah. Um, all right guys, so let's get into it. Uh, so, Season three, this was crazy. Vinny, you, you just uh, you know expressed some thoughts and opinions about it. Uh, Chris, what did you think of this season? Season three was was really cool. I just kept hitting the play button. It was like next episode. <laughs> I was just like hit the next episode. I'm sitting down watching it with my son, and my family. I was just like yo, just hit the next episode. My wife kind of got pulled into it. Martial arts is not her thing, um, but she said she's got her son involved. We met through through type one though, which is kind of cool. Um, and then, yeah, we kind of just all sat on the couch and it, I just saw her coming closer and closer to the screen. Hey, what's <laughs> happening? I was like, shh, shh. So, you know, it was <laughs> me and the boys were like, you know, totally glued in on, like you said, going back to the action scenes. I was looking for, I'm, I'm interested in choreography because, mm -hmm. you know, you can do so much cinematically. You, you take you, anybody that's making films or, or movies or anything like on Netflix, you get to take all kinds of uh, dramatic liberties that you want. Mm. So, you know, it may not necessarily be true to, you know, what the original source was, but I look for, in this, I look for obviously the relationships like you were talking about, which is cool to play out, but having the martial arts in there, that's kind of where I tuned into, mm. you know, how they were doing, like the actors are actually pretty, they move pretty well. Like, I mean, they got these yeah. kids doing, especially if you didn't have a background and just to explain real quick, like if, you don't have a background in martial arts and then you're getting ready to do a movie in martial arts like it it's, yeah. it's a toss-up you know whether you're going to look good or not on yeah. film you know, I think, like, uh, you know the, the actor who plays robbie has uh, some some experience and training yeah you can tell you can kind of tell like even watching power rangers back in the day like the very first ones like you could tell which one of those guys like was doing it for real you know jason david frank was like the man oh. you know you knew oh, that yeah. the, i would actually all the original power rangers were hired based on their athletic ability rather than oh, their right. Yeah. yeah right correct so like you could tell who was like all right she was the gymnast the ballerina but you know the crossover but anyway the mm -hmm. season was really cool i liked how kind of the the drama still builds it has like this ebb and flow so it goes up and crescendos and then goes down and yep. just when you think something is gonna be that what i really like i guess is that they don't spend too much time on any one thing like yep. they, they they kind of flesh it out move on to the next thing flesh it out move on to the next thing but it's all still tied to this theme right well like these two these two dojos almost like three factions now are really warring right yeah with each other so i'm interested more so to see what happens you know with the with the conclusion of the show what the end will be so i'm i'm entertained obviously but i want to see where they leave this entire series off because this will be like not the conclusion of cobra kai will be the conclusion of karate kid 
Right. That's, that's how I think about it. So I'm, I'm yeah. interested to see. But I just happens. wanted to keep going. You know, I know no, there's, going be, there's going to be a huge war next right. season or the right. season after. But right. the, the the merge between uh, my Miyagi Do and uh, Eagle Fang, yes. Um, yes. I think there's don't have fangs. Yeah, <laughs> I think there's going to be an awesome Quiet. team up. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and um, taking down Crease and Cobra Kai, it's just. It's going to be pretty cinematic, very epic. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's amazing, like, because I really look at them as five hour movies, you know? Mm -hmm. They're half hour. It's so bingeable. Like, there's, I said, like you were saying, just kept clicking play. So, New Year's Day uh, it was the day after my wife, my wife's birthday is New Year's Eve. So, I said, listen, tomorrow we're watching Cobra Kai. I had my phone. <laughs> Nick actually came over and we binged the whole thing in one day. It's like there's not one bad episode and they get so much done in a half hour, you know? Like I'm, I'm dying for season four already. I'm like, I, I want the next season. And yeah. there's a good amount of characters too that, this, and they really have yeah. to dig deep with each one. But they do it in yeah. such a way that it's like it, like it's like you said, Chris. It flows definitely. The flow. But they take like the smallest detail from the others' movies, mm -hmm. like just saying, and <laughs> goes to Okinawa, and the girl that he saved uh, on the the bell from the typhoon and karate. Yes, too. she was there. Oh, she's vice president of the Dayona. It's like, wow. And there was the actual actress, too. There was the well, actual she, girl. They brought back the all the original wow. people, yo. Yeah. Like, yeah. that didn't die, they were like, yo, get them on. And it was cool. Yeah. They're all back. Even uh, uh, yeah, Daniel right? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Little things like that, as a fan, it goes such a long way. Like, you know, the writers have said, this is their Star Wars. Like, yep. they're obsessed with it. And they have, and what, well, speaking of Star Wars, I said, uh, I keep saying this. I'm like, this is like the proper way how to do nostalgia and bring it to a new generation. Yes. They don't trample over everything that happened before. It respects the past, you know, <coughs> Last Jedi, you know? <laughs> well, I think this is to Karate Kid is what Mandalorian is to Star Wars. I well, can agree. Yeah. You know, I think it's a good analogy, Randy. Good hey, job. Man. Good job. <laughs> I said, I'm like, what are your two favorite shows? I'm like Mandalorian and Cobra Kai. Like, oh, really? Because they feel it's like so different. I'm like, but you know what? You care about the characters. Correct. You know? Correct. For sure. The, the, the favorite. Oh. My favorite guest appearances this season. Um, so you've got, you've got, is it, is it Yuki or Yukio? Uh, Yukio. Yukio. Yeah. And you mean Chosen, who is like eternally pissed off at the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he, all he, out. He Faces softens up a bit um, with, with Daniel. So that was cool to see. But he can still fight. Yeah, they yeah. still fought, but you know, there was an understanding at the end of it. Right. Um, well, they gave him a redemption arc, you know? Yeah. yeah that Talking was about crazy, right? Chosen, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. But my yeah, favorite, game. of course, was, uh, and this was like the main thing that excited me about season three was the reappearance of Allie Mills, played by Elizabeth yeah. 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 And just to see the, the interaction between her and Johnny right. after like 30 years was really, I thought that was fun to see. Yeah, yeah. and it was like they said, but uh, when uh, they broke up in part two, they even gave an explanation what really yeah. happened. Like right. they didn't leave any space for like any kind of plot hole there. That's what I appreciate, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. It was like they never, they never left. They, they really, no. it was, they didn't skip a beat. So that was really cool to see. Mm -hmm. But I they mean, needed that in order to move on and join forces. Right. Like they need that kind of resolution. Like, hey, we're yeah. Closure, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and yeah, the interaction between uh, uh, Daniel's wife now, Amanda, <laughs> yeah. and Allie, so, you know, the girl talk. And Yo, I, right, I right there in that scene, mm -hmm. I was like, if you really, if you zoom out, it's like, it's like Daniel takes almost like everything away. You yeah. Know, like he had the, he's got, he had Allie and then they didn't work out, but now he's got this great wife and, you know, their partners in this great business and it's working out and they have the money and, you know, dudes looking at him like, yo, like, you know, I just can't, I just can't win. I mean, I'm in the same, I'm always in the same <laughs> room with you. I'm being compared to you or I'm fighting you or you're taking something away. It's, it's, you can almost see like, you know, how the style sort of, comes out in a sense physically where you could just because you get you can only take so much i guess you know what i mean yeah. and you know what i wanted to mention something sort of a side note yeah. daniel's kind of a player if you think oh yeah, oh, yeah. Big, um, big time. wait first movie was ali second was yukio third movie was um what was her name robin lively that's the i know that was the actress i just can't remember her name the, the character's name she was cool i liked her well trivia she was supposed to be the love interest in part three but Ralph Macchio was married at the time, believe it or uh -huh. not, well, and his not, wife not, very not jealous. Just that. Not just that, but uh, he, but the, but the girl, but Robin Lively was only like sixteen when that movie was made, and yeah. he was like twenty-eight or something, right? He, yeah, he was pushing thirty. <laughs> but uh, 
Yeah. He look at him. He doesn't look going to be 60 this year. He doesn't look 60 at all. Bro. Had the dudes from Superbad, man. They were like, they're way older than what they played. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's crazy, crazy to think. He's actually, actually, Ralph Macchio is older than Pat Morita was when the first three movies were made. Yep. Wow. And uh, he looks like he's in his 40s. I'm just going to say, he does not yeah. look yeah. like yeah. anywhere. Early 40s. Yeah. 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 Sure. So, great. um, but no, so apparently his wife got jealous, so he couldn't have a love interest, so they had to change it that they were just friends in this one. Oh, that's interesting trivia. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Good job on that one. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, uh, so that, that was your character's name. Yeah. What was it? Uh, the character's name was Jessica. Yes. I was going to say Jennifer for some reason. But yeah, Jessica. Was it Jessica Andrews? Uh, no. I don't think there was a last name given. Okay. Not important. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually Blake Lively's cousin. Yep. No, oh, Blake Lively. Yeah. Actually, Blake Lively's older sister. Huh. I thought they were cousins. Nope, sisters. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought they were cousins. Okay. Yeah, I actually worked on a, actually worked on a film shoot with their brother-in-law. Yeah, she was the original witch. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to go back to the, the thing that I love about this show the most, the character development and the arcs. <laughs> and there are so many great... So mm -hmm. at, at the core of it, you've got, you've got Johnny and Daniel and Kreese. But I want to talk a little bit about the supporting characters because um, there's so many great ones. Mm -hmm. All of them are. Uh, yes. Chris, do you have a, a, a favorite supporting character? I would say, I think Miguel's got the most potential. <laughs> the most potential. He's redeeming because it's almost like, really, that's like John. It's like Johnny's like second chance, at not just having a son, but of like having some kind of humanity, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's, you know, he's, you know, he, when the show starts, it's like, you know, him and LaRusso have gone completely different, totally divergent directions from each other, almost like diametrically opposed yeah. all together. And then <laughs> right. as, you, as, as this guy, as, as, as Johnny sort of attaches himself to Miguel, this kid that lives in his apartment complex, he's like, yo, I mean, he doesn't just validate his ability to teach and his interest in the martial arts. It's almost like, okay, now I should be developing a relationship with my son, which we saw last season, you know, him sort of spilled the beans on like, yo, what's ha this is what's happening with, you know, my kid. And, you know, I wasn't there in the beginning and being a father, like that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's real. I'm sure, I'm sure many can, you know, it's, it's like, it's real. You know totally. it's like, yeah. It's totally, it, 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 I think the show really pulls it, everybody sitting down on the couch in some way. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Miguel's really possesses that uh, versatility in the show, if you will, to kind of be, he sort of embodies whatever Johnny feels at the time. Mm -hmm. And then they move on and Miguel embodies what Johnny feels at the time. And now we're in season three, you know, after he's you know recovered from the injury and, he's, and Johnny's helped him, you know, significantly he wasn't, you know, apparently going to ever be able to walk again. They told Bruce Lee the same thing back in the day. So I'm not going to mm -hmm. believe doctors anymore after I mm -hmm. get off of this, but you know, it's like, you know, if you get someone to a point as a teacher, that's really, I can identify with that, you know, getting someone to have like a breakthrough moment or several. And, you know, do you have that a lifelong attachment, you know, to that person? And it makes you sort of want to elevate your game because you have to be the person that they continue to come back to for guidance. Yeah. Uh, so now Miguel's sort of not really on the offensive as much as he was. He's mm -hmm. sort of adapting to whatever his sensei in this case is sort of you know emitting you know that and that same energy so i think they match each other but i also think miguel has the ability to change you know really but probably the biggest influence um on on johnny is not even really his own son but miguel you know? yeah so i think that's kind of what i see and you it's know the, the whole thing it's the mentor uh protege Right. Uh, dynamic that is so prevalent in this show right it's, it's like at the core of everything here yes. and these poor kids like these are good innocent kids but then you've got people like crease coming around right and johnny doesn't know what the hell he's doing with his life yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um and uh, you, all these, you have all these marginal all these marginalized kids like who like daniel was in the in the first in the first right. movie yeah. right but then and, daniel thinks he's doing the right thing now but he's yeah. He's kind of he's like instigating this a little. He's like Absolutely. fueling the fire a little bit. Absolutely. So I don't think anyone's really innocent in this. In this, in well, this party. All, all the line, all the shoes have switched. Yeah, mm. well, all the shoes are, are on the other feet. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, the lines are blurred, and you know, a lot of these kids they're lost too. A lot of them are bullied. You know, 
you know, like uh, Robbie in the sense, I mean, everyone always says, oh, Robbie's this, Robbie's that. I'm like, but look at his background. You know, his dad didn't give a crap about him. His mom was, you know, alcoholic, really didn't give him much attention. So he's latching on to the things, you know, that he feels like make him feel like someone like, oh, you know. Yeah. And in the meantime, when he was trying to get back at his dad with Daniel, he winds up loving Daniel, just like, you know, uh, Daniel loved Miyagi, you know. Right. It's mm -hmm. it's totally messed a lot of, up. It's a lot of kind of sideways, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I do feel for Robbie and him in, in, in Juvie is not great. Yeah. You know, he's a he's a good kid. He's just very unlucky. Yeah. And um it's sad. Yeah. So but we need drama, so yeah. That, yeah. That way. They created it for us, you know what I mean? Yeah. Effectively. Yeah. Even even though I could just watch, you know, Johnny and uh and Daniel at a, at that that Mexican restaurant like that's a good that's an interesting that's a great, scene. yeah great yeah <laughs> there's no fighting there's nothing really big going on in that scene they're just kind of talking and it's a little yeah. tension but it's it's cool they have a lot in common they actually yeah. become the best of friends if they're just able to put their own and crap Allie, them. and Ali calls them out on that yeah <laughs> she's like the mediator yep <laughs> the first season when i listen to ario speedwagon it's like holy crap are they becoming friends you know yeah. uh, that's what I you like want ali, i feel like ali restored some of that uh mm. she kind of revalidated you know johnny in that sense you know in that that final scene where she had to go back and get her kids after the whole party scene like yeah yeah you know, she gave him like she gave him a purpose without you know coming back in the sort of cliche way like you know like i was gone and now i'm back and we'll move forward and yada yada it was like no, I got things to do, but uh, I think you should keep going down your path. And he's like, right. yo, you're right. You I think they to want to be with each other, too. I think because they were going to kiss. Yeah, right? very, close. I, very close. Very close. Yeah. Very I think close. when she knew the full story, she was like, I think we're just living in the past. And visiting the past is nice, but it's not their future. And I think that's when he comes to the realization, you know what? I really have feelings for Carmen, you know, Miguel's yeah, mother. Correct. You know? correct. She put and he perspective for him, which is great. Yeah, yeah. That was a really good scene. It was. Um, Forrest, your favorite supporting character? Oh boy, favorite supporting character? Um, hmm. God, probably. Oh God, it's pro. I'd probably say. Um, I don't know. Miguel and I don't know. Miguel and Robbie are both pretty compelling. Are both very compelling characters. All right. Um, for different, you know, for different for different reasons. Um. Hmm. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> yeah, it's a toss. I would say, yeah, for me, it's a toss up between Miguel and Robbie. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, for me, I think um, the most, one of the more interesting supporting characters is probably Tori. Uh, mm -hmm. she, oh, yeah. Tori's she great. So I, knew, I knew Tori was coming at some point. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. She's great. She creates all this drama, all this conflict, potential murder. Yeah. And yeah. Um, she's just a really, really good villainess, you know? Absolutely. So um, always, I think she makes, I think she makes uh, younger Johnny Lawrence look uh, absolutely like a Boy Scout. Yeah. 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 Yeah, sure. she's nuts. You can just see it in her eyes. Like, there's Boy, something Boy, not right. <laughs> she's got a lot going on, too, to that. Yeah. End. Almost like Robbie. She's got, right. she's kind That's of just out mother. of the situation, right? Like, you know, like mom is, you know, laid out in the bed. You know, she's got a younger brother. You know, it's like, it's tough in a situation. The landlord's kind of, you know, kind of a, a wild dude. And it's yeah. like, you know, she's just trying to, she's got to be the adult. She's the adult in her house, but she's she has to grow up so fast. It's like, yeah. You can understand, you know, where that like he is, where, where exactly, you know, so that's kind of her origin story. They explored that best here. Cause I'm like, why is she just so ready to fight everybody? But now you sort of you sort of see that the it's martial like, arts are like the like vehicle she, for her to express. It's like she went from a uh, girl to yeah. like badass hardcore yeah. woman. Like she, she yeah. really skipped over teenhood. Yeah, she, sure. She's just really well, look at her situation. Nuts. She had no choice but to grow up fast, you know. No, no yeah. choice, exactly. Yeah. Adapt, adapt. Yep. Yeah. So when you really think about it, you you kind of do feel sorry for these kids. You know, they they mm -hmm. were dealt an unlucky hand. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, it, this show is so good at you know the gray the gray. They should have just called it the gray area because everything is just <laughs> total gray. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um. So I think. Back in like a few months ago, I started watching this. I watched seasons one and two. They're on Netflix, and mm -hmm. then I decided to go back. No, no, I'm sorry. I did. I, I I watched the first few Karate Kid movies. Then I went into season one, and uh, yeah, again, total totally great flow. Yeah, went right into it. Um, 
I want to know from you guys, uh, what do you, how do you think the, the films stack up with the show? Chris. If, with regard to what? So do you think they, the show is like a good companion piece? Does, does do the ah, flow exactly. into the show? Exactly. Yeah, you know what? It's been a while since I watched the Karate Kid movies. So I'd have to go back and I'd have to go back and do that. But honestly, from what I remember, I, I did watch all of them several times. I know that. So I know there's, I know enough. I, I feel like I know enough to be like, you know what? It's kind of a smooth transition. Mm. Like nothing was too stark or sharp. Like it was real kind of slow and smooth as it went into the first season and ramped up all the way to the third season. So like I said, it's, it's, a, it's definitely a good companion piece. Like you said, um, I think the, I think one of the interesting aspects of it, now that Pat Morita is actually dead, who plays uh, Mr. Miyagi, um, rest in peace, but it's kind of cool. I found it kind of cool to see the student go and still pay his respects to the teacher. Yeah. Yes. I mean, after that's the, I, I have that relationship with a couple of different instructors. Um, and I feel like that's kind of, that's kind of what, it's a lifelong companionship, right? Like, and even when they're gone, I, I feel like it was like a really good homage to like both the actor and the essence of the instructor um mm -hmm. of like in, in a traditional sort of you know format because when you have in the in the karate kid you didn't have a big school of like 50 students he was actually quite the opposite he was the one that had the the one student mr me i got that one student mm -hmm. that was you know essentially like you know like the golden kid in his you know in his sense and he was even reluctant to teach him um right. so mm -hmm. you know you kind of see some of those teachings come out um, and I guess the, I guess the cool part from the, from the movies to the show for me, um, being a martial artist actively now is, is like, if my instructors are gone, that's the real test of what I've learned, not while they're still around and I can ask and I can call them on the phone. Hey, sir, do you know X, Y, Z? It's like, no, when they're gone and there's no one to call anymore. Hmm. How do you carry on the legacy of what you learned? It's not... It's not the martial arts that they're really passing on. That's all like structural stuff. You could teach everybody that stuff pretty easy, but it's more about how to live your life. Again, it goes back to the lifestyle. So to see that, you know, in this case, the Russo makes pages homage to Mr. Miyagi, going to the headstone, cleaning it off, right? Yeah. Making sure there's nothing. I, I love that scene. It was so, it was emotional too. Like, yo, the, like the real dude's dead. Like it's, 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 it's yeah. crazy to see how they were able to do a bunch of things in one scene. Yeah. Um, or or even like when uh, when Sam and Tori were fighting each other in uh, at, in the final in the in the season finale, and and Tori knocks over that photo of Miyagi and yes. breaks it, yes. and you see Sam's reaction. Right. Right. Yeah. Like there. Yeah. Same, yeah. Thing, same thing. It's told in stuff like that with the picture and also flashbacks to kind of connect the movies with the show, which was really tastefully it's, done. It's great. <clears throat> And uh, in reference to Pat Morita, I actually, I rewatched The Next Karate Kid today. Right. Oh, God. Oh, it's God. not as terrible as you th may think. <laughs> well, the only good thing in it, Pat Morita. Other than that, the movie's just terrible. Yeah. And, and, and time through. out, Pat Morita didn't even know martial arts at all. Like, no. he, he was like, a comedian. He, he started his, his career as a comedian. Correct. Yeah. I, didn't, I, I, learned that. I learned that. <laughs> I thought he knew, you know, the, the way. Nope. And I was like, no, nope, oh. totally didn't. He had to learn. Yep. Arnold yeah. on days man he was a full-fledged comedian you know yeah yeah so it's good. had it's a very of... american accent too right like he, yeah, he was, yeah he was born born on american. america yeah yeah yep. they cool. didn't want they originally didn't want him because they because they knew he was a comedian right and he had the role and his audition just knocked it out of the park they wanted like sunny chiba they wanted these other yeah. japanese guys but mm. yeah you know pat marita doing all those funny scenes like the honk and making yeah. all those jokes that's all improv on his yeah. end you know yeah and then yeah. that really a lot of heart to Miyagi, you know? Yeah, he, yeah. he had some good lines, some funny ones. And Very also, much. Pat Morita was um, nominated for an Oscar that year. Yeah. For a kid for, in, Did, yeah. Didn't he win? No, he didn't win that year. Okay. No, no. Uh, I don't know who won. I have to look that up. Yeah. But um, yeah, he's he was very versatile and he actually had top billing in The Next Karate Kid. It was really his show. Yeah. Like, it was his movie. Uh, and Hillary Swank was kind of like, you know, second in command there, but she um, wasn't bad. She actually wasn't bad. It was just that the movie itself, uh, like I think, in the large, like in the overall, like its place yeah. in the franchise, it's like, I got like, I, like New Year's Day. I was, I went back and watched 
the first three movies before I watched got back got back into Cobra because I watched Cobra Kai when I was on YouTube, but I went back right. and watched the first three movies, and that was like on the fence whether or not to watch the next Karate Kid because I felt like it doesn't really it kind of feels like it takes a whole detour to the franchise. It doesn't yeah, really add much. Add I, they they right. don't mention Daniel at all. Um, no, they did. They did once. Briefly. They, they oh, really? Yeah, because he was saying how you know lived with boy Daniel's son. He goes, boys are easier because you know she was like uh -oh. getting undressed, get her okay. uh, stockings on her changing. But that was like yeah. the only reference, right? That yeah. was the only. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, well, they want Ralph Macchio to come back, but he you know he said it through the years. They kept asking him, but all the scripts were terrible, you know, and he didn't want to be you know the Karate Kid as a man. So yeah, yeah. But Cobra Kai even better because when they pitched it to him, he was like, "This is the way to do it. This yeah. is the." do it you know and john they call it, they call it the miyagi verse john g Adelson died uh, around the same time as uh season one i think yeah yeah interesting yeah it makes well, it more sense to bring it daniel back when uh he's on you know when miyagi's gone he's he's now his own miyagi yeah, yeah. Own. He lost, <laughs> he lost weight, martial arts brings him back you know Absolutely. but Absolutely. they said though that because they said would you know julie from next karate could ever show up and the writer said, anyone that has ever been in a Karate Kid movie, the Miyagi-verse, it's like they could potentially show up. I think they would probably do something cool with it. You know? Yeah. yeah. Well, that would seem it. Yeah. A, a Harry, Hillary Swank appearance would be really uh, interesting. I also, wouldn't be surprised. It's been a good while since I've seen since, since Hillary Swank's been in anything. The Hunt notable. was the last big thing. Well, she's a two-time Academy Award winner. I don't think she would waste her time. She would have to wait till the momentum, like I mean, the Elizabeth... season three went up, and then they those actors come in when it's at the they ride the high tide. They're yeah, like, yeah I'll exactly. Now and ride with you, and then I was... I'll get out whenever you know. By the way, I'm gonna say you know Elizabeth. I mean, you know, even though you know Hillary Swank's won Oscars, but I mean Elizabeth, she won Oscar, won an Oscar, and she still came back for the show. Yeah. Did she... I thought she was just nominated for Leaving Las Vegas. Did she win? She didn't win for that. No, I don't think she won either. Oh, yeah. I think she won. She, she's Wait, nominated, listen, but she's in that category. It's, it's the material. Yeah. That's you know, why I'm so surprised when she showed up here. So I was like, wow. I'm glad to be here because I didn't get spoiled for me, you know. And I was so happy when I saw her. And they pitched it to her, and she was like, "Yes, this is this is excellent." So I always think a lot of times with actors, it's the more the material, like not just to show up and wink at the camera like a little cameo. It's like, yeah. you know, <laughs> where character thirty years from now, and like, what's the significance? And like, they yeah. gave her significance you know Definitely. like you have her back on the show again personally mm -hmm. you know no i think she said her piece and she was and it was great and yeah. it was perfect she adequately yeah. she had like a 15 minute scene you know yeah plus yeah. Uh, actually she mentioned that she met, i think i was watching an interview with her and she said that uh while she was working on the boys mm -hmm. uh for amazon that's when they approached her <laughs> yeah that's when they approached her and apparently apparently like people like fans crew members on the on the boys were but were asking her when is she going to do cobra kai Oh really? Yeah. So maybe like that she hadn't even been offered offered the show yet. Interesting. Yeah. Well, if they, I think they are they doing a, a remake of Adventures in Babysitting because uh, <laughs> one be as the mother. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say they did do a, an Adventures of Babysitting remake, uh, Adventures in Babysitting remake recently for Disney Channel. Well, they did. Yeah, pretty toned uh, down compared back. to the original. <laughs> Must be terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I just wanted to mention it since we're on the, the subject of guest stars, um, Thomas Ian Griffith, who played Terry Silver, has mm -hmm. declined an offer to reprise his character. Oh, um, this, oh. Where, this, is that? Yeah. Where, this, this is according to IMDb. It's in their trivia section, so I don't, don't know. Believe, don't, don't believe. Don't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> actually, funny, funny, actually, a bit of six degrees of separation. So, um, uh, so Thomas Ian Griffith, his real life wife, uh, yes. was in the Disney Channel original movie Johnny Tsunami. Playing, yep. playing the wife of Yuji Okamoto, who played Shozen. Yes. That's cool. Yeah, there's, so, there's a lot of overlap with um, William Zapka and Diora Baird, who plays the, the, the his um, ex-wife ex -wife yeah. on the show. Thank Hot you. Tub Time Machine. They were in Hot Tub Time Machine as a married couple. So. Well, you know who wrote Hot Tub Time Machine, right? Oh, who? The same writers of Cobra Kai. Was it ah, John? Uh, ah, okay. Yeah. They are diehard Karate Kid fans. And they said, oh, because I think um, Hot Tub Time Machine, they go to the 80s. They're like, oh, let's get William Zapka. Right. You know? <laughs> so that was John Hurwitz, Jason Schlossberg, and Josh Heald. Yeah. They actually pitched it to him back then, the show, their idea for Cobra Kai. Didn't, um, they didn't go. They didn't. They weren't interested. Well, they didn't have a lot of 
clout at that time, you know? Yeah. And I mean, look, they they wanted to do it as a movie and then all of a sudden all these streaming service, because this was like in the beginning of the heyday of Netflix, you know, like mm-hmm. right before Netflix hit big. Right. You know, look what we have now. We have Hulu, we got Disney Plus, Prime Video. You, know, man, you still can't, sometimes can't find what you want to watch, man. Yeah, so <laughs> these platforms to where it's like, oh, you don't have to spend much as a movie, but you could shoot things like a movie and have episodes to show it in. Like, you know, it'd be risky to do a Cobra Kai movie, you know, yeah. but as a show, yeah. it was like, oh, let's give it a shot. And Netflix originally was going to get it, but they were going to pitch it. YouTube gave them the money flat out, was like, oh, we need shows. There you go. You know what? I could see like an El Camino type of situation, you know, because that was a Breaking Bad movie. Mm-hmm. But maybe they could do a Cobra Kai movie. But well, they could. They, they already said they're doing seven seasons of Cobra Kai. Like, that's what they have mapped out. Okay. Uh, said there's room for spinoffs. So, I don't know. Maybe Young Miyagi. Maybe Young Kreese because we saw him in the military. I don't know. But yeah. that's what they A lot said. of option, A lot of uh, possibility there. I like that. Right. And they that's said the same that. Same thing it, with The Mandalorian, right? Like, in the Star Wars, they keep expanding. The, you know, after The Mandalorian now, it's going to be Boba Fett's got his thing and so many yeah. other spinoffs. Yeah. Well, cool. Or now you got, oh, look at the Rocky franchise. You got, you've got right. Creed. Creed, yeah. Yeah, I compare this to Creed coming in from yes. a different angle into the Rocky franchise. This is a different angle to the Karate Kid franchise, Absolutely. you know? And Absolutely. as storytellers are today, these platforms give you the opportunity to really go deep into it, you know? Yeah. That's so, I, I don't think this would have had a chance, you know, without a platform like Netflix, the show would never. And when they first announced it, I thought it was going to be a comedy series. I was like, ah, oh, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it is funny as hell, but yeah. it's. It's, it's a drama. Serious. It's it's, it's been it's advertised. Drama. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it does feel like a five-hour uh, movie. Oh yeah, I feel, to me it feels like the Karate Kid sequel we should have gotten after after Karate Kid Part Two. Yeah. See, everyone gives three. I love three. I don't know why. I, well, I three, I, like it. three I enjoy in a so bad it's good kind of way. Yeah, it's yeah. Terry Silver steals the show. Yeah. He's like a great villain. I love Thomas C. and Griffin. He's a legit yeah. type of uh, expert too. Yeah. He, yeah. um, and he's very yeah. tall. And he very has a very different. infectious laugh. He does. He <laughs> played my favorite villain, uh, Valak from John Carpenter's Vampires. He was awesome in that, yeah. Yes. I could see that, yeah. But I don't think you saw the, the Reunited Apart thing I sent you. He was on it. I don't think if he wasn't going to come back, he wouldn't have been on it, personally. He barely spoke. Yeah, he was just there, kind of like... Well, they edit it for time, you know? Mm-hmm. They edit everything. I mean, they had, like, everybody on that, so... No, yeah. that was yeah. a good one. I think he's coming. Yeah, I, I hope so too. Because they be weren't cool. supposed to carry Silver up like that in the season if he wasn't coming back. Right. Yeah. I want to see him and Mike Barnes, and I want to fight between yeah. Johnny and Mike Barnes. That's what I want. The end of part three, it was just the the, the tournament, right? It kind of ended like the first film. Just one match, yeah. though. And mm-hmm. Yeah, and then you just see Terry Silver and Chris smiling like jackasses. Smiling and, and laughing. Up. Like, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Chris almost uh, bitch slapped a kid because of the shirt he threw back in his face. That's the last scene I remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh, there, there wasn't really any closure with, with Terry Silver or Chris in that scene. I mean, they weren't really, fo- nobody fought them. Chris doesn't have any closure at all. Yeah. No, well, I have my theories. This show to get him, I, get him uh... I have my theories personally. I think. That Miguel's dad is Terry Silver because remember when Carmen was Thinking talking about, about that? Yeah, I think wow. the same wow. thing too. Huh. I think that. Interesting. Think that. Carmen was talking about her ex husband and she said he was into very bad things. Right. Terry Silver was exposed, you know, disposing toxic waste, you know? Yep. She yep. Said my husband. So maybe, you know, maybe when he came to the, the valley, I don't know. That's what I think. I think, or Tory could be related to Tory in some way. I think there's mm-hmm. always a Cobra Kai, you know? Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of things going on and possibilities uh, love it i love it so guys where do you see the future of cobra kai you, uh vinny you said there's uh there's going to be three four more seasons from what the writer because i mean as soon as season three ended everyone was clamoring to hear news for the fourth season right and right. all the writers they're really cool with their fan base they give as much detail like right now the cast is actually heading down to start uh filming believe it or not right now yeah, really? um believe panels it. i watched there's cobra kai theory cobra kai kid they actually yeah. just interviewed martin cove um and he's and the writer said like we have seven seasons mapped out you know we could always do more but we have seven seasons mapped out if netflix decides they want to end it early let them know in advance so they can kind of have everything have a resolution you know right but they so i mean what i'm hoping is now obviously miyagi do and whatever is left of johnny's cobra kai is going to join forces i want to see 
Miyagi Kai, you know, right. and Johnny had a black suit and uh, <laughs> Daniel had a white suit. I want to see like a yin and yang costume. Oh, yeah, for all the gray movies. suit. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, right. Yeah. That's, That's awesome. what I, um, but you know, I'd, I'd love to see, I mean, you know, I want to see more other people's uh, backstory, you know, that kind of stuff. Cool. Maybe we'll get a Stingray spinoff. <laughs> <laughs> I wish he'd come back, but he's in Japan. Yeah. Yeah. What, what the hell ha happened with Aisha? She was really good. I know. I hope they bring her back next season. I'm hoping they bring her back next season. They said they couldn't yeah. fit her into this, the script for season three. So well, you look at it this way, because they also said, look at like people from the first season, like Kyler and Yasmin. Yeah. You thought they were disposable throwaway characters. They, they all came back. Too. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. So, I mean, on top of everything that they did, because a lot happened this season, you know, Aisha was kind of pivotal to Cobra Kai, but, you know, she would, you did, I, I could understand they didn't know what to do with her, you know, but they said that they always intend for people to come back. So I'm pretty sure she'll be back next season. She'll be back. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, Chris, so you've shown your, your, your daughter this, this show. What has been her reaction? Like, is she a diehard fan now? She's, uh, she's, um, I think she's a diehard fan of movement like I am. So there's, there's that, um, you know, but she's almost two and she, she actually sat surprisingly sat still for like, at least, I would say at least two episodes in a row. Like, you know, and that's like, that's a long time for a two year old to sit still and, and keep focused on anything. Uh, you hold their head still and their eyes are moving around, you know, so. <laughs> um it, it's it was actually kind of cool but there's enough action even like i said going back to how well they how well i think they they filmed it there's enough downtime enough action time enough downtime enough enough drama like it's a balance it's it's really like everybody in the house can sit down and watch that you know so and i've watched i've watched my kids watch it watching their reactions more my son and their and the sons and they they were really really like and, and they're both martial artists as well so everybody in this house except for my wife you know, right now does does martial arts. I even have my uh, little uniform for my daughter. But uh, you know, like it's it's interesting to see how they're doing it. Again, they said they have seven seasons mapped out. Yes, they have more than that. In you know, in their minds, seven seasons mapped out. Maybe more for as a business plan. You know what I mean? Like right. maybe as far as we can take it. You right. know, they get the spinoffs and stuff. But uh, I don't know. There's so many combinations. I feel like I can't really narrow down any one thing I want to see. I kind of want to see the evolution. I'm more curious to see the evolution of particular characters. I want to see if, you know, Daniel sort of takes on more of Johnny and Johnny starts to be more like Daniel, yeah. how that affects the relationships between their students um, and Miguel. Cause you know, as it being in it, going back to my background, like, you know, there were days where I taught where, you know, I had some pretty, you know, bad life stuff or good life stuff happen. And when you look back at it retro, you know, retrospectively, you're like, Oh, well that I kind of, put some of that energy into that lesson or I wasn't as excited that day. And, you know, your, your students get affected, you know, directly by your, your energy. It really is an energy exchange with people. Right. Um, so we're seeing a lot of that play out as well. More, you know, the tournament stuff is totally unrealistic to see like some of those movements, like, come on, like you would do that versus do this. Like I could no. just, just punch and end the story right there. But um you know the choreography is great like i said i pay more attention to that and that being true uh to, to actually what happens in the fighting realm but you know dramatically cinematically i think you know there's so much possibility it's 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 really great for me to not be able to narrow down what i want yeah. i just wanted yeah, to keep no. going i just wanted to keep going uh, yeah me too i just want to see more of this this universe unfold yeah right, it's wonderful the characters are oh i can't get over the character development and, and some of these actors didn't even have like you know jobs really like after after karate kid we didn't really hear much no. yeah. these, these i mean Mal Machu and zabka kept uh you know they've made maintained steady careers since the karate kid but yeah. Yeah. There's nothing quite on the level of Karate Kid. That's what I'm uh, saying. I'm, I'm, I'm like all for these people getting paid. Like, yo, get their money, get, yeah. in, get out. That's why they're thanking everybody. Like, hey, we're number one on Netflix. That means they're getting the money. So I'm, I'm happy that they're getting paid for that. They're That's relying it. on their their personas, their characters from 1984, and they show up in like you know sitcoms as themselves or yeah, parodies. Yeah. And um, you know, and well, listen, they get they get plenty of royalties, so they've gotten Karate Kid money well in through the years. Yeah, I mean, you talk about awesome. Karate Kid <laughs> is part of American cinema. It's an correct, institute, correct? You know? it's true, yeah. Like there's Yoda, and then there's Mr. Miyagi as like the old time. Right, you know, it's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> Again, so, the Star Wars parallel. It's it's really it really is, you know. So <laughs> I mean, and 
like I said, to see this show come back, what, th- almost 35 years later, yeah. the fighting, the fighting that they did back then, I mean, you know, in the 80s, it was cool, but they're doing even better fighting now yeah. in the 60s. Right. You know, it's like, I never would have thought, I said, the show is so much better than it deserves to be, but right. it's so well written that when yes. it gets a little cheesy, you just buy into it. You're like, no. it's okay. It's not like they overcook the cheese. It's like enough cheese to be like, hey, this still feels like karate kid, <laughs> you know? Yeah. John Hurwitz, Hayden Schlossberg, and Josh Heald, they know what they're doing. Yeah, definitely, they've crafted something beautiful here and you know this is my new favorite show i think it used to be breaking bad as my favorite um you know drama i think this is my my new favorite drama dramedy oh yeah right you know? and it's also one thing they they don't overdo the fan service like when the fan service comes in it's kind of vital to the story yeah you know it's not like fan service like oh remember that thing they did in 1984 well here it is like no it is it serves vital. the story exactly and that's the best kind of storytelling you know yeah, it, it expands upon what we know but also yeah. adds something new which is yeah but another franchise just all they do is they depend on their fan service you know yeah. and it's just like you feel unfulfilled this is like so fulfilling like little things like chosen saying keep for your collection when he gives daniel the script that's yeah. what he tells kumiko when he throws uh, his shirt at her after she hits her with the tomato like they put that line in there and they made it awesome you know mm-hmm. All these Easter eggs, man. Nice. Yeah. They add up. They even have Easter eggs from the animated series on the show. Like, that's how <laughs> it goes. Oh, I didn't. I, I, was too, I was too young to remember the animated series. So, yeah, it was only like 15 episodes, but the, the, the magic pagoda they were searching for is actually in Daniel's dojo. Huh. Interesting. So, Did they, yeah. they use Bill Conti's score at all in the, in the series? Yeah, plenty of times. Okay. No, the, the animated series. Oh no, not in the animated series. I no. know they use it in the in yeah. Cobra Kai. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Give no. me some credit. <laughs> it, the animated series was very over the top. Like at one point, Daniel's riding on a torpedo from a submarine. Like, like karate. Uh, that. Typical eighties eighties <laughs> cartoon antics. Yeah, like, like James Bond <laughs> Junior. <laughs> Remember James Bond Junior? Of course, yeah. <laughs> uh, good times, good times. Uh, um, Forrest. How are you with the future of uh, Cobra Kai? Are you are you optimistic that we're going to get better, uh, more character development, better stories, kind of oh, continue I, that train? I hope. I, I hope. I hope. I think so. I hope so. Yeah. Um, I, I heard that they were going to do try and do at least you know two or three more seasons, and I'm hoping that they can, you know, get you know continue expanding the character arcs and, but also and still tie you know manage to tie up tie everything up in the end. Yeah. Yeah, let's see it goes um, much longer into the future. I, I want to see a, a, a Cheers type of season run. You know, I want to see 11 seasons of this. But, um, you know. I hope. <laughs> you know, I guess they actually, they actually, also- actually, the way you describe it, it's more like a MASH type. It's more like a MASH, yeah. MASH type of run where the, move, where the show runs longer than the, than the movie. Yeah. 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 I just want to see this. Like, I'm with you, Chris. I want to see this go forever. Like, it's just, I want it to keep going. For sure. So... All right, guys. Well, um, about ready, uh, almost out of time. But um, before we go, uh, we do this on the show, Chris. Uh, we do plugs. Basically, what's going on? What what we want to promote? Want to you know give a shout out to? Gotcha. So, um, Chris, anything you want to mention? Cool. Okay. Yeah. Well, I've actually got these masks, cool masks, sitting right here next to me. These are actually Ooh. my brand. I branded myself. Um, so I'm nice. sort of on my own as my own entity. So that's my name, Chris Malarkey. I have the uh, yin and yang. We're talking about yin and yang on the show. I've got that here. So you can uh, catch uh, my website, uh, mastercm.net. I've got a bunch of, uh, you know, plugs to any, anything, my instruction, my private lessons, Facebook, Instagram. I also have a podcast of my own. I started uh, about a month ago called Mastery. It's on all streaming platforms, iTunes, uh, YouTube, SoundCloud. So Spotify, I'm, I'm pretty much out there and available. So that's mastercm.net. If you're trying to get at me. Sweet. Awesome, awesome. Check those out, guys. Uh, Forrest, anything going on? Anything you want to plug? Uh, well, I'm currently part of the I'm, I'm currently a part of the Inside Movies Galore podcast. Uh, this month we are just we're we are uh, our, our, we're discussing our, our top our topic of mo- our top our theme is Days of Future Past, where we discuss futuristic sci-fi movies that are officially outdated. Mm-hmm. Uh, this week we're going to be we're going to be talking about John Carpenter's Escape movies, Escape from New York and Escape from L.A. <laughs> awesome looking forward to hearing those uh mr bonfanti anything you want to mention 
Oh, no, nothing at the moment. You know, the pandemic's kind of stopped all those extracurricular activities, more or less, you know, so just working. That's about it. I hear you. I know you're a busy man, and I want to thank you for being here tonight. Of course. Great. Yeah, it was nice talking to you, man. You got a lot of good stuff out there, man. This is fun. Yes, definitely. And I look forward to seeing more Cobra Kai. I want to see. It's weird because I'm. We're gonna. We're seeing like sort of a, a shift, or like, or like Daniel and John, and you're kind of becoming one. You know, oh, like yeah. that merge. So <laughs> well, it's, it's gonna be interesting to see oh, yeah. the conflict of how they're gonna train the kids because they have two significantly different I, training. Yeah. Methods, you know, so they're, gonna, they're gonna be butting heads a little bit more. In their, well, uh, I want to see them trouble. adapt each other's personalities a little bit, you know, like it's okay to have mercy, you know, but sometimes no. you got to strike first, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. You're going to get to the essence of, I think, what what the self-defense is really intended mm. to be. And I think they're going to see more of the effects. I see more of the effects of teaching yeah. martial arts mm. on people's actual day-to-day lives when they're not in front of me or on the mat or on Zoom. Yes. I mm. see. I see it happening more there. You know, when you're when you're training students and you know you're kicking and, and moving around, and I and I I must do taekwondo probably six or seven days a week at this point. Um, mm. So it's it's nice to be able to sort of see that the impact can be for much much bigger than the physical, because um, you know they tell you that when you're you know a young student white belt. Like I said, Vince, you probably can 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 second me on this one. But it's like mm-hmm. you you hear you hear that, but you're not focused on that. No, you know, not at all. Never. Young, like, yeah, whatever. Like I got fifty thousand years to you know reach that point. And now you and I are both fathers and I'm like, I need this more than ever right now. Like those lessons I heard reverberate. So it'd be cool to see how like, again how you how they merge, how they if they have a unification of what karate means. Yeah. yeah. You know, all, all across the board, all across the spectrum for everybody that they're yeah. you know, Teach. And I mean, even the, and and even the younger viewers watching Cobra Kai, um, they're exposed to this. They want to go to their local dojo or Tiger Showman's, right. and <laughs> they get that discipline, that athleticism, that you know mental physical balance. And well, um, I think the show is really is really good for that. So well, I also like it not to keep going on, but that how this show is putting like the spiritualness back in martial arts because yes. a lot of people's affiliation say martial arts all MMA, right. and yeah. Right. information huh. called mmf martial arts fighting because right. you know uh mma is it, it is an art but like there's essence yeah. to the art there's the discipline the responsibility you know the defense you know mma is more of a sport you know and i'm not saying anything because any mm guy could kick the crap out of me you know <laughs> but um you know i love the essence of the spiritualness and the beauty of the martial art that they put back into this show you know, a lot of, a lot of that's found in right there. Not to, I mean, just pulling yeah. anatomy. A lot of that is found in the in the traditional disciplines, yes. right? Where where it's formal. You wear meaning you wear a belt and you wear a yeah. uniform. Everybody looks the same. You have uh, so more patterns to do, right? Like mm-hmm. that's where you find you find your base. And MMA practitioners, fighters aren't typically traditionists. They may have a base. No. Funny enough, a lot of them have a base in Taekwondo. I spoke to one. I have one. I'm trying to speak to. Uh, in a couple of weeks and I've sparred with the number two kickboxer in the world a couple of weeks ago. Um, mm-hmm. Actually it was last week. And I see, I see the difference in what he's learning, not to say he's not good. He's great. Um, yeah. I see the differences stylistically in what I do and what he does. And it's, it's, it's very cool to see, you know, people have the different understandings essentially of the same, of the same converging view at some point. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Bruce Lee wasn't traditional either. He wanted to break tradition. He couldn't know, right? Totally d- big difference. He wanted to get rid of that name before he yeah. died. You know, he just he couldn't, did. you know? But so. he never took away the philosophy and spiritualness that is martial arts. Absolutely. Absolutely. That a lot of that's lost. And when you watch Cobra Kai, it's like, yes. yeah. this is what martial arts is really about. Commercialization. Yeah. 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 yeah, that kind of thing. No, I definitely promote going out and just doing your own martial arts, just practice, train, you know, it's a great, it's a great sport. It's a great uh, way to vent, I'm sure. And it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's a beautiful art form. And I'm so happy that this show is putting that art form in the spotlight. Um, and yeah, so Cobra Kai seasons one, two, and three are out now on Netflix. So check those out. Very bingeable, binge worthy. Check them all out. A great show. Also the video um, game played. It's awesome. Oh, is it? Okay. Yes. Yes. Not, the old, yeah. not the old Nintendo game, right? No, the new one, Cobra Kai, the video game. It's two-player, uh, kind of Double Dragon-esque. Really good. A little different from the NES version, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, guys, I want to thank you so much for your time tonight. This was amazing. 
And uh, yeah, I'm Rand Younger. This has been Unger the Radar. We'll see you next time. Take care. Mm-hmm.